Hey friends! In this video, we're taking a look at a movie adaptation of a classic novel published in 1903. That's right, we're talking about The Riddle of the Sands from 1979 starring Michael York, Simon McCorkendale, and Jenny Augeter. Our story goes like this. Young British yachtsman Davies is sailing about the coast of Germany, specifically the Frisian Islands, trying to update the navigational charts, as you do, when he stumbles upon a mystery. The Germans are up to something, and Davies contacts an old school chum, Carruthers, who works in the foreign office. Together, they sail about the area trying to figure out what the Jerrys are doing. Said Jerrys are suspicious of these two Brits because the Jerrys really are up to no good. What follows is a cat and mouse game as our heroes sail around to gather clues, trying to dope out the mystery while the Germans try to stop them from learning anything. What exactly are the Germans up to? And Will our heroes succeed? And what about Kaiser Wilhelm anyway? In our cast is Michael York as well as Jenny Augeter, who both had recently appeared together in Logan's Run. In this film, they aren't a couple though, they just both star in the picture. York plays the minor official from the foreign office, Carruthers. Augeter plays the daughter of one of the Germans. Davies is played by Simon McCorkendale, better known as Manimal. <laughs> That's right, he was the star of Manimal. The look of this picture is just excellent. Not bad for a first time director. Some of this was actually shot in and around the Frisian Islands, so you get a sense of what the region is like. See, this region floods at high tide and is sandbars and mudflats at low tide. The sand's shifting over time, that's why Davies is updating the charts. So the waters are fairly shallow, which is why England wasn't worried about a naval assault coming from there. The Riddle of the Sands is considered to be one of the first adventure espionage stories, which teed up the later work by Ian Fleming and others. Childers wrote it out of patriotic motives, trying to get the British government to see the danger in an unprotected swath of coastline. Though a bit apocryphal, Winston Churchill credited the novel with opening the eyes of the Admiralty and leading to the construction of a naval base to defend that part of the English coast. Erskine Childers was the real deal, a yachtsman who actually sailed in and around the Frisian Islands. Some of his logbook entries were transposed into his novel word for word, and he describes real places and towns he visited, which gives the book even more reality. He also served the British Empire in the Boer War and the First World War. Later, Childers went from British Patriot to Irish Patriot and was executed for treason in 1922 on pretty thin charges. Ugh. Still, he was a class act. He shook hands with every member of the firing squad and insisted his son seek out and shake the hand of the men who sentenced him. Sounds like a right guy to me. Anyway, as for our film, this movie does change some things from the book, most notably the ending. But in fairness, the majority of the film really is a respectful and even loving adaptation of the novel, and the changes in the ending were made with an eye towards making that a little more cinematic and exciting. The only really dumb thing here is that for some reason, the director thought it would be clever to hide Michael York's face until he meets his friend, Manimal. Hiding York behind lamps, papers, 
shot from behind or out of frame. Why? I mean... Why? <laughs> the, the other problem with Riddle of the Sands is this. This movie was shot in widescreen, but so far as I can tell, the only version available is in pan and scan. That's true of the Amazon Prime version I screened, and I suspect that's also true of the DVD version. So, while you should be watching this, all you see is this. Again, why? Hopefully, someone will fix this travesty and release the film in its proper format. Still, don't let that keep you from watching the movie. It's a minor distraction at most. York, Manimal, and Agator are all good in this, as are the supporting cast. The movie has a real-world look with an accurate depiction of boating and the region the story takes place. So I'm giving Riddle of the Sands three paws up. That might be a bit generous, but it really is pretty faithful to the original story, and I appreciate the effort made all around. I recommend you read the book, too. It's, it's really good and in the public domain. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.